All right, so we're going to go on a cemetery walk. Um, the actors are youth members, so they might be a little nervous. It will be really helpful if we don't um, have conversations during the tour. If we're, if we're quiet, we'll be able to hear them better. And just follow me, the lantern, and we're going to make some stops. And this tour is going to help you focus on the last things. Purgatory, hell, heaven, your judgment. And hopefully when you leave, you'll have something to think about. Let's go. Enjoy it. So you're walking through the cemetery tonight, are you? Hey. What do you expect to see in the cemetery? Specific goblins? The dead would like to have some words with you tonight. Don't waste the time of the dead, or of the ones who still live. Don't go through the cemetery in a casual way, just listening with your ears. You must listen with your mind, and with your heart. There are some things you should be afraid of, and other things you must never forget. The monks used to greet each other with some words, remember your death. Are you preparing for your death? Don't worry, the dead will help you. You see, what makes this cemetery walk different? It's not about the sister. It's about you. Remember your death. Prepare for your death. Live your life in light of your death. Because when it's all over, there ain't no second chance to do it. Don't do it. What are you waiting for? An invitation? Tonight is your invitation to never forget. Listen closely now, because the dead would like to have you know. vision of hell, and even if I were to live many, many years, I believe it would be impossible to forget. My name is St. Teresa of Avila. I was a Carmelite nun in Spain in the 1500s, and one day when I was praying, the Lord showed me the most horrible vision of what hell was like. It was the place he had saved me from. I'll never forget that day. When I got into the entrance of that horrible place, it seemed like it was a long, dark alleyway, like a very confining oven. The floor was filmed with what seemed like polluted water, and there were disgusting vermin swarming everywhere, and I can't even describe the stench. There was no light, only the deepest darkness, and yet I was able to see everything, all the horror around me. I saw the horror that surrounded me. The pain I felt in my condemned body was greater than anything that I had ever suffered or could suffer, and I suffered a lot in my life. But that was nothing compared to what I felt in my soul. It was like my soul was continually being ripped from my body. But not because anyone else was doing it, but my soul on its own was tearing itself to pieces. It also felt like fire scorching my soul. The worst part was when I realized that the pains of hell never end. They never let up. No relief. Ever. I can't really describe it. There really aren't any words for the agony and darkness I experienced. If you were to see what I saw, you too would do whatever you can to avoid it. How can we be so calm when the devil carries off so many souls every day? How could we be satisfied with anything short of doing everything that we can to save them? For the love of God, keep free from occasions of sin, and the Lord will help you as he helped me. Leave nothing undone. Do whatever it takes. No sacrifice is too small or too great. 
for the love of God, help one another to heaven. Um, for attending this event, I just want to make that known. <laughs> Why are you looking for me there? Do not be afraid. My soul is no longer there. What you see before you is only my body, and even that will be raised on the last day. My name is Saint Cecilia and I was one of the early Christian martyrs, one of the witnesses for Jesus. I would often go to the catacombs to bury the bodies of the martyrs. This was forbidden by Roman law, therefore we were called lawbreakers. They arrested me because of my faith, but they couldn't scare me into worshiping their God. There's only one true God. It didn't matter if they threatened me with torture or death. There was only one who had control over death and new life. A judge ordered that I be killed by the sword, but even after three blows, I continued to live. They left me to bleed to death over the next few days. As I lay dying, I directed my face towards the floor so I could commune with my God in secret. During my martyrdom, it wasn't fear that I experienced, but love. And now I live forever in the presence of love himself. You may not be called to be a martyr like me, I don't know, but we are all called to be witnesses for him. And it won't always be easy. But this life is temporary and passing. We weren't made for this life only. We were made for eternity. Make your decisions in light of eternity. Live your life in light of eternity. Almost two weeks ago, I was in a car accident. And when I came to, I knew I had died. All of a sudden, I was brought before the presence of God, but I knew I didn't belong there yet. Not because God wasn't ready for me, because my soul wasn't ready for him. I see now all the choices I made for and against his goodness. I tried to be a good Christian, but I was basically just a good person. But now I see everything, every part of me that I held back from God. Why did I put other things before him and my family? Was I really that busy that I couldn't make time to pray? Why did I think I had to live life alone as though he wasn't by my side at every moment? I've never experienced more joy than I do now, and yet more pain. It's hard to even imagine what my sins did to my soul, and how they kept me from the one that I love, and the one who loves me. Every moment that passes is a moment closer to seeing the light of his face. Listen to me, and don't forget these words, for they aren't mine. St. Paul reminded us that at the end of our life, our lives will be revealed before the tribunal of Christ. Do you know that I've been praying for you? That's what I said I would be doing in heaven. That I would spend my time in heaven doing good on earth. I'm St. Therese. I only lived to be 24 years old. And I never did anything big. Just small things with great love. That's how Jesus taught me to pray. Prayer isn't hard to do. I just speak to God and he understands me. Just do small things for him. When you do your work, do it for him. When you do your chores, do it for him. When you pick up trash, do it for him. Do it all for him. It's just small things with great love. Just do whatever God has called you to do. That's how you become a saint. Anybody can become a saint. Remember, it's not the type of things you do, but the amount of love that you put into them. I'll be praying for you. Why would you go to church on Saturday? What well, makes you a Catholic? You think God makes you Catholic? How many churches are there? One true church. And how do you know this? Because as I see, there are many churches, many faiths, many religions in general. And how do you know the true one? How can anyone know? Do you wager this with your life? 
what is the point of your existence otherwise? You know? Most are quiet and wondering, thinking hard about this. Because there's no guarantee that anything you believe is right, is there? All these folks here, where are they now? Uh, some of them are friends of mine, actually. Not just here, but everywhere. Throughout all the land and throughout all the time, I have many friends. I have friends with me. But you trust your faith, don't you? Yes. You trust that this one church will set you free, right? Ah, I see. I see. Well, there are better things, I tell you. You can have fun. Enjoy yourself. You can be with me. You can have a good time every day. This whole idea of sin is quite nonsense when you think of it, isn't it? It's fun. How does fun have to be a sin? How can we enjoy ourselves? No? I call on you to join me. And join the many with me. You think of it. And I'll see you all around sooner than you know. Your guardian angel is beautiful. He just told me how much he loves you. Sometimes the way that saints show that they pray for you is that they send you flowers. That's what Saint Therese does. Every time someone asks for her prayers, she sends you flowers. say my name. He called me by name. I'll never forget seeing the beauty of his face. It was dazzling. Brilliant. And how could I ever describe the way he looked at me with so much love and welcomed me with love? As I looked around, I saw the oceans of people everywhere. Millions upon millions gathered for the celebration. It was beautiful. Really, there was only one way to describe it to you. Only one way to explain. Your eyes have not seen, your ears have not heard, nor has it dawned upon any of you of what God has planned for those who love Him. You are home. You know you're home. I'll be waiting for you.